folks, Scott here with a new card video featuring the Honey Bee Stamps Little Pickup Stamp Set and Die Set. I ran across this stamp and die set online and had to have it because I am the owner of a little pickup. <laughs> I actually bought this only new car I've ever bought in 1988. I still own it. It is still running strong, a 1988 Toyota Tacoma. So I bought this stamp set online. I'm sure I found it somewhere on sale. I'll try and find that place and link it below. It has so many things to go in the bed of the pickup, barrels and apples and pumpkins and gifts and trees. I had to have it. So I stamped all of the images that I was going to use on this card on some Bristol Smooth cardstock and reached for my Zig Clean Color Real Brush markers to color this. I used the Mid Brown and the Carmine Red to color the truck. I really like using Bristol Smooth cardstock when I'm coloring with Zig Clean Color markers because it moves so well on this paper. On a stamp like this, I will go in and color each little area all on its own. I think that helps with the shading. And I wanted this to look a little bit old and rusty since it is an old truck. And of course, red. I love my red. I did color the wheel wells using the dark brown. That's the area above the tires. I colored those using dark brown. Didn't do any shading on those. I'm not a big process video person, <laughs> as most of you know. I like to just show my cards as they're finished. But a lot of people have asked to see some of my process. So I'm in between card kits right now and thought that I would share this with all of you folks. And I am working on a new camera setup with some new lights so I can actually film on my Tim Holtz glass media mat without any reflections, because it is class. I think I've got a pretty good setup here. Anyway, we're coloring the truck red, mid-brown. Each section alone helps to define not only the lines, but also the shading. I use a very, very, very small, simple, cheap brush that I'm sure came in some painting kit somewhere at some time. It's nothing special. I try not to use a lot of water when I'm working with my Zig, but a little bit of water goes a long way in coloring with Zig Clean Color Markers. And I do reach for the blue-gray for the silver accents on the truck the running boards, the bumpers, the light, and of course the hubcaps. Now there are dies included in this kit that cut out the wheels. So that's why I stamped the truck a second time. Also in case I messed up on the first one, <laughs> but I did paint the, did stamp the truck a second time so I could cut out its wheels and put some dimension on the wheels. I thought that would be fun. Let's use as many dies in this set as we possibly can. I'm making a get well card here. I ran across a great sentiment to go with this kit. This stamp set does not have any sentiments, so I knew I was going to have to come up with my own sentiment, and I found a great one online. It's a get well card, so I figured the apples in the barrels would be great because an apple a day keeps the doctor away. I colored the green apples with may green and pale green colors. I colored the regular apples just with the carmine red. Used the green for all of the leaves. These are pretty tiny stamps. That's another reason why I went with the Zig Clean Color markers is because of their very sharp, sharp, sharp paint points. You can really get in tight. And you have a little bit more control than with an alcohol marker, I think, with stamps this small. With the barrels, I colored the barrels with the dark brown and the mid brown. Trying to keep everything in the same families. Of course, I colored the bands again with the blue gray marker. I decided if the wheels were going to be dimensional, then the fenders should be dimensional too. I mean, the wheels shouldn't stick out past the fenders. So I decided to go ahead and color the fenders on the second truck 
And though there's not a die for those, I can certainly fussy cut them out and add them to give us a little bit more dimension on the side of the truck. Great truck, really nice. And this is the first Honeybee stamp set I've ever owned. They stamped beautifully. Very, very, very nice, especially for the fine lines. So these are the dies. I'm going to break the dies out and cut my images. It's always a tiny bit of a crapshoot the first time you use dies with a stamp set, especially if you don't know the company. You're never quite sure exactly where the dies are going to cut. These seem to line up really pretty good, so I thought my chances were really very strong on getting good die cuts this first time around. So of course we're going to die cut the truck. We'll die cut one of the wheels and the apples. Now, I do ultimately get the apples wrong, so I will cut the apples a second time. One of the great things of working on this glass mat is if you have a cuddle bug or something that suctions down, it'll suck right down <laughs> to this glass mat with no problem. It doesn't move. I always turn over my die cuts to see if I've made a good die, made a good cut. And yay, look at that. That truck came out just marvelous. The apples, not quite so. I got them a little off to the left. I have to do those again. The barrels came out really good. The tire came out equally good. Really nice dies. Very easy to line up. If I can get this good of die cuts on my first pass with these, then they're really, really nice dies and go with the stamp set very well. So this is me looking at that other set of <laughs> apples that I did stamp <laughs> just in case. So I did color the apples again. You can see that they've been die cut. I'm cutting out all of the, I colored three of the little itty bitty apples. There's even a die for those little bitty apples. I thought that was great fun. You can see I did get a much better die cut on that second set of apples. And here I noticed that there's actually a die for the windows on this truck too. So I decided I need to die cut these windows out, put some acetate behind it, get a little bit of shine going there. So it looks like glass. This actually came out very nice. I was very pleased. Again, I got a really good placement on those dies for it's the very first time using them. This front window pops right out. The side window pops out really well too. Now if I had been paying really close attention, which of course I wasn't, I was just playing, <laughs> but I realized that these window dies actually cut out the window frames also. So I taped the front window back in just with some scotch tape and took out just the center part and leaving the frame inside there. And that looked much better. I did color up the edges with the carmine red. Now I knew I wanted to put the apples in the barrels and I thought that the extra die cut edge would be a little odd between the apples and the barrels so I decided to fussy cut the barrels out. I'm very comfortable with the exacto knife. I've used exacto knives my whole life. I would much rather fussy cut something with an exacto knife than with a pair of scissors. I think I'm much better at it than with scissors. Um, here I'm just coloring the edges of the cardstock again with the dark brown Zig Clean Color Marker, making everything ready. And because there is no die for the fenders, I went in and fussy cut those out again with my exacto knife love using my exacto knife and cutting on this glass mat is really a breeze i have a tendency to push a little hard when i'm cutting so instead of digging into a self-healing rubber mat this glass mat glides right along is really nice to cut on so i do cut out the two fenders just with my knife and there's everything die cut the wheels, the fenders, the barrels, the fruit. And of course, I want to put some acetate behind the windows. So I cut a little piece of acetate, used my 
Ranger multimedia mat to glue that acetate behind the windows. You have to be careful when you're using watercolors and liquid glue because the liquid glue will make the watercolor run. There's my acetate. Let's put this truck together. I go to my EK Tools 3D dots. I talked about these a bit in my uh, Oh Baby card kit. One sixteenth of an inch thick, very thin little pieces to be able to be cut apart. Now if you know, if you cut one side of a strip, one side will stick to your scissors. I love doing that and just using the scissors to place my foam dots where they need to go. Little fiddly bits. These are small bits. That's why I use my zig markers on them. Those apples are going to really get me <laughs> at the end of this card. But I love that extra tire on top. It makes the inside hubcap look like it's recessed. It's I think these are great dies to go along with this kit. And wait till you see the fenders go up. It's much, much, much fun. I like the coloring I got on the truck. It looks like an old red truck. A little rust maybe here and there. Again, I need to color the edges of those die cuts. I reach for the carmine red and just use straight red on the edges. It makes all the difference when you're layering things up as far as having the edges colored. It makes it look like it's been cut out perfectly. And we attach this fender to the front and that looks great. The tire looks like it's behind the fender. We'll do the same on the back fender. Color the edges of that. Miss a little white there. You can see the white when you put it on top of the other piece. Got to fiddle some more. I think that white is on the top of it. So there we go on the corner. Make sure there's plenty of color. And now our truck is all assembled. <laughs> I think that's a great truck. It looks really, really, really nice. Now we need to attach the apples to the barrels again using liquid glue. Got to be a little careful. I do have a precision nozzle on the end of my glue bottle there. I love that. They fit so nicely in those barrels. That'll all fit in the back of the truck. Adorable. Now this is a plain white card base, 100 pound card base. I debated what to put on the back. I cut some trees out of some glimmer paper. I decided to go with this Craft Core Nostalgia Collection. This medium brown and this olive green. I used my Lawn Fawn Grassy Border die and the Ellen Hudson Stitched Lines die by Julie and cut these pieces out. I did add that glimmer green as a bit of a shadow behind the olive green. I thought that added a lot to that simple grassy border. I'd recently gotten the small cloud stencil from my favorite thing, so I wanted to use that for my background. So just deciding where that first one was going to go. When I use a stencil, I always like to tape it down. I'm notorious for moving things around while I'm working. So a little bit of tape helps distress oxide in the broken china and one of my ink duster brushes makes very short work of this. This is very simple and this is plain cardstock. This is not on Bristol smooth cardstock. This is plain old 100 pound cardstock and that brush gives you such nice blends with really very little effort. Look at that. So I do three more and then I always go back over everything with the brush, kind of soften up the edges, spread it out. That Distress Oxide ink is just terrific for blending. 
that sky looks terrific. <laughs> That's all I can say. <laughs> There's our ground, there's our sky. That's how it's looking so far. There's that truck is gonna go there, of course. We'll mount that up on foam tape. So there's no sentiments in this set, so I knew I was going to do my own sentiments. So let's go to the silhouette. Here's a little silhouette tutorial for you. I'll go into my silhouette and I'll draw a box. Make the box four and a quarter by five and a half inches. So that's my card front. I'll try and lay out my card front here before I create my sentiment. So this is your menu to change your box size. I go to five and a half inches wide, four and a quarter inches tall. And there's your card front. Now I have a grassy border with the road that is an inch and a half tall. So I just duplicate that first rectangle and change the duplicate into an inch and a half tall. It's already five and a half inches wide. So that represents my grass and road. And then I duplicate that and change the size of that. So it's three and three quarter inches long by an inch and a half tall that represents the truck so i lay that out on the card in approximate locations to see where i have room for my sentiment to go so then we get into the text menu in silhouette and i type out my text and of course i gotta color the text we're making this black to go along with the black stamp of the truck thought you could use a little pickup that's the lovely sentiment I found online. Uh, makes me laugh. I knew that I wanted to use the marker felt. There it is. The marker felt 24 point. You can shrink your box down so it's more accurate. And then when you put your sentiment on your box, if you select that and select the card base together, then go to your alignment grid and align the centers and it'll put that right in the center. I thought that was a little large still so I went back and changed it to a 20 point font. That seemed a little bit more in scale with the card. Didn't want the sentiment to take up the whole front of the card. Again select the sentiment, select the box, have the software put it in the center. Now I have to lay this out for the printer. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to add the back of the card right over the initial rectangle and lay it out as if my whole card is there. I'll then print that up and use that to print my sentiment. If you want more in-depth coverage of how I print these sentiments, go check out my video for the printing your unique sentiments on your cards. On my light board, I lay everything down on my light board just to make sure that I like where the sentiment is. It's on the paper still. I haven't put it on the card. I like where it is. I put the card onto the paper with a little washi tape. Run it along my skin to take a little tack off of it. Line it up with the lines that were printed. Tape it down. That's the leading edge into my printer. I'll send it through the printer again and it will print on the card front. This is the first time I've actually printed on an inked background. I thought that would look really nice, really look almost like a stamp. Send it through the printer and that's what we get. Very pleased with that. I will do that some more. It looks like a stamp. So let's put this card together. We're going to add the road and the grass on the bottom of the card. I will leave just a little bit, about an eighth of an inch of the white showing on the bottom. I think that helps pull in the top of the card to the bottom of the card. Gives a little bit of a border and a little more interest on the bottom. Just a hair's breadth sticking out beyond the edge of the card. So trim that off with my scissors. There's our road in a nice cloudy day. We'll use those same foam dots to attach the truck with a little dimension.
looks great. I love that when you turn it and see it in the light, you can see the glass in the windows. And those barrels with the apples are going to fit perfectly behind there. Again, using some liquid glue so I have a little fussy time when I lay it down and can get it just right. Try to use very little of this. This glue works great. I really like this multimedia mat for almost all of my liquid gluing. Gives me a little time to move those around. They fit perfectly in the bed of the truck. I think that is adorable. An apple a day keeps the doctor away and there are plenty of apples there. And now I've got, of course, three little individual apples. I don't like place those as if, as if they're falling out of the back of the truck. I like this a lot. When I found this sentiment, I was like, I want to make this card. On the inside, of course, it says get well soon. Back and forth, can't decide where does the green apple go in the middle or by the green apples. Ultimately, we do put it by the green apples. Of course, it was pointed out to me that if the apples are falling off of the truck, it implies movement and there is nobody at the steering wheel. So I just said it's a Google truck, <laughs> a self-driving Google truck. There you go. Love this sentiment. Thought you could use a little pickup. The inside does say get well soon. Really, really cute card. If you'd like to see more videos like this from me, just leave a comment down below. I will be starting a new subscription with My Monthly Hero in May, so I hope you will join me for that. There are no blog links for this video, but I do have a new blog post featuring a Star Trek communicator card. So if you'd like to see that, just go to cardcutups.com. Thank you for sharing your time with me here today. Please like me, list me, pin me, post me, share me with all of your friends. Don't run with scissors. <laughs> and happy crafting!